new excitement at tcm.com slash festival. Hi, I'm Robert Osborne. Every Monday over the past last two months, we premiere the latest chapter in the documentary series, The Story of Film and Odyssey, which looks at both filmmaking in the U.S. as well as around the world, from the 1800s to the present time. Well, last week, our focus was on American cinema during the late 1960s and the 1970s. Tonight, with Chapter 10, we stay in that time frame, but observe filmmaking far beyond sunny California. And my co-host is the writer, director, and narrator of this 15-part series, Mark Cousins. Welcome again, Mark. Thank you, Robert. Now, was it a particular challenge for you to go to these other countries and talk to filmmakers there? This was one of the most exciting bits, certainly a challenge for me. But w what I liked was that I knew, I knew that I wanted to say to people, we know about Scorsese, we know about Coppola in the 70s, but just at the same time, in West Africa, in Senegal, there were filmmakers equally important coming along. So that's what this bit had to do. I, I went to West Africa and m filmed in the places where these new filmmakers, less well-known names, uh, were making masterpieces. Jibril Job Mombeti, Usman Somben, filmmakers who change the language of the movies but are not so much part of what we know. Now, you as a film historian, you already knew about a lot of these people, but did you learn a lot that you didn't know? And did you find out about filmmakers that you weren't that aware of? Yes, I did. Uh, you, you know, um, you think you know about a filmmaker until you go to their home, you go to their land, you go to their country, and you discover so much about them th through being there and meeting the people that they knew. Uh, there's one filmmaker featured in this episode who's one of my favorite directors, Mom Betty. Um, and I thought of him as a rebellious guy uh, making a new type of African cinema. And then I went there and, the, and his friends all said, you know he was a punk. And once uh, that word punk was enough to help me understand his determination to shake things up. So something like that, you know, or if you even for some reason, even if you go to the cafe where a great filmmaker sat, you get an app, you get a sense of them more. So that was great. And this bit of the story, it goes to Africa, but it also goes to Germany, the new new German cinema, right. all those great filmmakers, Wim Wenders, Fassbinder, etc. And once again, to go there, you just get a sense of their world. Well, that's what this series brings us, I think. It's such an international feeling about it. We always tend to think of films as Hollywood. Yes. And there's so much else yeah. going on in the world. Yeah. If there was one European filmmaker above any others that maybe we don't know so well here in this country, who would that be? And who should we study that well, we maybe don't? Of the European filmmakers, I'm going to mention somebody who is quite well known, but still not valued enough, I think, and it's Bernardo Bertolucci. The reason why is right at the beginning of this period, uh, in 1970, when he was just 30, he released two films, The Conformist and The Spider Stratagem. Both of them masterpieces. It's actually annoying that he was so brilliant so young. <laughs> 30, yes. 30. But the reason why I mention him is that he was looking at the films of Gene Kelly. He was looking at the great films of Marcel Offel, of Max Offels. He was looking at beautiful cinema, you know, glossy cinema, but also marrying it with European sensibility. So what he did was build a bridge between Europe and American cinema. And that bridge remained. And out of that came lots of people like Francis Coppola's work, etc. So I think that Bertolucci is a key figure in this period for that reason. He marries the beautiful and the true. And that's what the best filmmakers did. Well, let's see what's ahead. Let's see what's going on around the world in film from the late 60s through the 70s. The TCM premiere of Chapter 10 of The Story of Film and Odyssey. This chapter is subtitled, Radical Directors in the 70s Make State of the Nation Movies.